Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. I was going to say on this beautiful day, but unfortunately, I'm uh, in a thunderstorm. So if you hear a little loud banging, it's not uh, craziness. It's just a little thunder in the background. So we're going to get started in just about two minutes. We got a pretty good sized class today, so we still got a few more logging in. Um, just a quick note, uh, we also have uh, Debbie Fajardo, our Director of Education. She is also on the webinar. She's going to be answering all of your questions today. Debbie, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. I'm lurking in the background today. <laughs> uh, it's Friday, so let me guess, Debbie, you're like, you know, got fuzzy slippers on and taking it easy today? <laughs> yeah, I am. I am definitely in casual mode today. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we've got, uh, like I said, we've got uh, over almost 40 people registered. So we've got a couple more just logging in. We'll give them a minute or two and then we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going to take you through uh, what you need to know about Authenticine 2.0. They recently released a new user interface, 60% faster. It's got some new really cool features. There's some stuff in here that I wanted to do for so long that we now can do like changing names on the fly. Um, you can uh, edit how you want your signatures lined up. Um, and again, it's so much faster. So we're going to take you through all of that today, um, as well as we're going to show you some time saving tips and techniques, whether you're new to Transaction Desk or if you're just looking to pick up ways to sort of streamline your workflow, we're going to give you those too. So as I mentioned, we've got just a couple more logging in and uh, then we'll go ahead and get started. Um, so whether you're a MyRealSource member or if you're just looking to keep Transaction Desk, we know that there's a few MLSs uh, that are not using Transaction Desk any longer. MyRealSource is going to keep Transaction Desk and we've just upgraded to the enhanced Authentisign 2.0. So we're going to show you all of that today. All right, with that, I am going to turn off my big frizzy hair thanks to this thunderstorm. And I'm going to get into some of the new advanced features in Authentisign 2.0. As you know, I'm a big fan. I worked at uh, ZipLogix, which is the maker of ZipForm for many years, been teaching Transaction Desk for, oh my gosh, I think almost. 10 years now. Um, and so I'm very, very excited about these new releases. We've been playing with them at my real source for quite some time, beta testing them. And I think you're going to be very happy with some of the improvements that they've made. All right, so let's get right into it. Uh, first and foremost, what you're going to notice is it's got a streamlined dashboard. Um, you're going to be able to do things like edit signing names on the fly. Uh, why I like this is every once in a while, if you've misspelled the name, if you did that in the old AuthentiSign, unfortunately, you had to cancel it out. You had to then copy and resend. It was kind of a pain. You can now edit those signing names on the fly. So if you've made a mistake, you don't have to start all over. You can go right into the contact even after you sent it, um, which I think is so nice because you don't have to recreate the wheel. Um, also, you're going to find that the new AuthentiSign is 60% faster. You're going to find also you don't have to click to open up each section. Everything is in one convenient dashboard. Um, and you'll also find that you can do things you couldn't before, like if you're working with attorneys and they for some reason reject a signature before it goes on to the client, it'll actually ask them why they're rejecting it. They can actually leave feedback. You can do that with signers as well. Um, so lots of new great things. It's also where you can um, edit your documents a little easier. They've streamlined the tools. I personally did not like the previous pen tool. Um, I, sometimes I would get it on there and it would be really kind of glitchy. They've improved upon that as well. I also love that you can edit your um, signature tabs. So if you always want the signature tab to include a date, or if you don't want it to include a date, you can sort of streamline that as your defaults too as you go. Um, so, all right, let me bounce to the next screen. Um, I think you'll also find that now with the clear interface, it really cuts down on time. It's also clearer as far as the documents. Those documents, when they come in, sometimes they were a little blurry, especially if you pulled in a PDF. They are now high resolution documents, so they're clearer. They don't have that fuzzy look that they used to have, which I know some of them, especially if you're getting them from another agent, um, they can be a little bit, uh, a little bit fuzzy and not so 
easy to figure out where you need to tag on those fine prints. Um, now it will actually keep those documents much clearer. Um, it's easier to rotate documents. And again, you can do everything on one single dashboard instead of always having to go through that four step wizard. Um, one of the other things is you can also still set up your templates or your taggings, um, but you'll find that now everything is open. So you don't have to click to open the windows. They're right in front of you. And again, you can easily change those signer names just as you did previously. But this time you don't have to keep going through each one of those wizard blocks to do so. This makes it that much easier. And again, I think your clients will enjoy that it's simpler on their end too. Um, they don't have that complete and then complete again, where sometimes it was a little off screen and became very difficult. I know a few of my clients really struggled with that if they were signing on their phone. Um, what you'll find is it's a much clearer interface on their end um, and less steps. So we're actually going to walk through that so you can actually see what the client sees too. And then lastly, as I mentioned, if you are working with an attorney or you're just sending it out to a signer, um, they can leave feedback of maybe why they rejected to sign the document. Maybe a date was wrong. Maybe their name was misspelled. Again, all of these things give you a little more insight to instead of having to pick up the phone and call the attorney and saying, hey, you know, why didn't you, you know, why didn't you allow that? It now literally sends that feedback to you so you can make that correction. So where we're going to start today is obviously we need some documents to sign. So we're actually going to start right within Paragon. And if you are a non My Real Source member, um, we have fully integrated pretty much all of AuthentiSign and Transaction Desk right into the listing ticket. So I'm going to use my friends. I never get the $2 million listings. Actually, it's a $3 million listing. I never get those. So uh, Tom Lipinski was kind enough to let me show off his today. But really, we're going to look at this in two ways. We're going to start off looking at it as we're going to write an offer on Tom Lipinski's $3 million home here and how easy it is to do right from the listing ticket. So you've got all these colorful quick action links. So if I'm ready to write an offer, let's say you just showed your client this home on Lakeshore, you're now ready to write that offer. You can go ahead and click on that. It kind of looks like a splash. It's actually the transaction desk um, icon. So we're going to click on that and that's really going to start the process for us. It's going to pull over all that information from the listing ticket because when we're in a hurry and we have a buyer ready to write, especially on a $3 million home, I would think, the last thing we want to do is slow that process down, right? We want to go in, we want to pull all that information directly from what's already listed in the MLS. So about 35 of those fields will carry over for us. Things like who listed the property, what's the listing price, um, and you know what's the other brokerage, all of that information is going to carry over so we don't have to rekey all that in the second thing is if you are a broker or if you're just an agent you can set up your packages which really eliminate having to hunt and find forms so for instance for my brokerage obviously if I'm creating a listing I want to use my listing package but because I am writing on someone else's listing in the MLS I'm writing an offer I really want to go ahead and include my buyer package these are really great ways for brokers to pre-assemble all the forms that they require so that I don't have to go in and look for forms or leave out forms that may be required by my brokerage. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that I'm going to select my buyer package. And then lastly, I want it to tag the documents, especially if I am the selling agent and I'm signing or witnessing, I want to make sure that it's tagged in all the right places. So I also want to make sure that it has my name in the appropriate areas in the purchase agreement. So I want to make sure that I'm selecting that I am the selling agent and create. So it's really that simple to pull over the information from the MLS and start filling out your transaction. Now, of course, if you're doing this on the listing side, well, we really want to do that from the tax records. And I'm going to show you that step in just a moment. So we're just going to kind of cover the buy side first, and then we'll go into the listing side too. Now, what you can see is it's already starting to carry over the photos from the MLS. 
and the auto flow is already starting to take place. So the street number, street name, year built, MLS number, school district, city, county, all of that's already carrying over. The lengthy legal description, uh, comments or information that I may need to know. So if I were really doing a purchase agreement here, one of the things that it can't pull is obviously what's the purchase price. So that's something I've got to get directly from my buyer, but I'm going to go down to purchase price here. And I'm going to say that we are offering, uh, we'll do 3 million. I never get in that price uh, point, but it would be nice. So then um, let's say that we are now putting in our EMD. And again, if you're countering, there's places uh, for an additional EMD. Um, and then over here, here's a quick tip and trick where you see the wizard that we're walking through. Now, you don't always have to use the wizard, but if you're getting familiar with Transaction Desk, I do recommend it um, because even though it has the listing side and the purchase side together, it's kind of like a generic wizard. You're obviously going to fill out your side of the transaction. Here's a little tip. If you're going to ask for appliances, like maybe you're asking for the stove, um, the range, you're going to ask for some additional things that you want to be sure are included on your purchase agreement. You can actually type them in under property includes. Same thing if you scroll down where it says property excludes, like maybe you want them to remove the uh, above ground pool or maybe the broken play structure in the backyard. You can actually include these and it will carry over to your purchase agreement under anywhere that asks for property includes or property excludes. So that'll save you some time from always having to fill that information out. Now I really filled in most of the information on the first step or the details of the wizard. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next because now I want to fill in the important dates. So I'm going to say that um, we're going to make our offer date today. And if we wanted an offer expiration date, we can fill that in. Now, really that's great for filling out the forms, but this can really do so much more. If you are an advanced user, you can go over here and set up tasks. So let's say you listed a property. You could have an automated email reminder that two days afterward, you wanted to make sure you had the lockbox installed or you wanted to make sure you had a sign installed. That can actually be automated and it can be uh, set up for your team members. So if you are, let's say, uh, part of an eight person team and one person on your team is responsible for putting on the lockbox and making sure the sign gets installed, this can actually be an assigned task to that team member that sends them an automated email two days after you list this property to remind them what needs to be done. So not only can you fill the transaction dates in, but you can also set it up so it's automated. We teach that also in our advanced transaction desk class, or you're welcome to call us and we can walk you through it too. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. We've got our dates in here. The next thing on your contact section, this is where I usually get the most calls. As you can see, it brought over the listing agent's name, the listing agent's brokerage, and of course, my name and my brokerage. But really, the most important step here, especially if you want to save yourself a lot of time in Authentisign 2.0, the idea is you want to go in and you want to add in your contacts meaning you wanna add in your buyers, your sellers, attorneys that may be uh, represented. It's also a great idea to have people that you commonly use like title companies or mortgage lenders that maybe you use over and over again, add them right into the transaction. So when you're gathering signatures, it can automatically send it to the title company with a personal note. The easiest way to do that is to simply go right to the add button and then just pick who you're actually trying to add. Now, as you can see, you could add yourself, but we've already done that. We've already auto-populated that for you. You could add an existing contact that you may have worked with before. You could add from your Google contacts. But in this case, we're just going to add a brand new buyer. We're going to say create new transaction buyer. The most important step to making sure Authentisign 2.0 works the best for you is making sure you tell the transaction desk program who this party is. 
Now, of course, you can make up your own names from the drop down. So if you're working with a referral company or an appraisal company, or you can add those in. But really here, the most important step is if I'm adding a buyer, I want to select buyer from the drop down list because it's going to auto tag everything for me in Authentisign 2.0, which means I don't have to drag all those tags right onto the documents. Those will already be done for you. So we're going to give our buyer a name. So we're going to call this uh, Barry B. Buyer. And we're going to obviously put in our buyer's email address. Now, I always say if you do the heavy list lifting right in Transaction Desk, Authentisign 2.0 is going to be so streamlined and simple for you. It'll be just a couple clicks and you'll be done and ready to send things out for signatures. So I'm going to put in my buyer's email address, my buyer's name. But what about those times where you have trusts or power of attorneys or maybe you have um, an estate? You can actually put in what you want to be below in your signature line right here. So let's say Barry Buyer is actually signing Barry Buyer, uh, power of attorney for Sally Smith. And that's what I want to be underneath the signature line. Then that's what I would use under legal name. If they're signing Barry B. Buyer, um, power of attorney for Sally Smith, you can also put that in the preferred signature. So really, you're only using these last three in the cases of power of attorneys, estates, corporations, things like that. Otherwise, Barry Buyer, the first, last name, and email address is really all you need to put in. Again, if you do have an attorney or someone like that, I would recommend adding them in here because I'm going to show you that new attorney feature today. We're going to talk a little bit about that and how it can go directly from the attorney right onto the clients for signature. But it allows the attorney to still review it and approve it ahead of time. So there's some cool hey. things there. Hey, Colleen, I had a question about the middle name. Okay. So is the middle name field auto populate for middle initial? Um, it's it will auto populate. So if you put Barry B and you could well, let me go back in and kind of show you that again. So, by the way, if you are adding a husband and wife, you do have to put them in separately because obviously a husband and wife don't sign on the same line. Um, so if I go back to my Barry buyer here, if I were to put and I just did be in the in the front name. But if I were to put Barry B here, that will auto populate onto the line. So if they do want to have a middle initial that they're using or a middle name, you do want to put it in here. I just have uh, I do a lot of classes. So I think I have like 30 Barry buyers at this point. So I usually put it here so I know which one I'm doing. <laughs> but yes, if you do type it into the middle name, it will carry over for you. All right. Makes sense. Any other questions, Debbie? I'm sorry, I kind of got rambling on and oh, didn't. We are good. You know me as soon as I see him. That was another question from Ed. So he's always on the ball with questions. So as soon as I see a question pop up, you know I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt you. Is that our Ed uh, Saint Albin or Ed Brittingham? Brittingham. All right. He, he is on so many of our mixing it ups and classes. Hello, Ed. Thanks for coming. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and again, so if you have a husband and wife, you do wanna add them separately because they're never gonna sign Ed and Sally buyer, right? They're always gonna sign Ed buyer, um, Sally buyer. So you do wanna add them in. But if you uh, are working with an investor, remember you can always add them to your contacts. I do recommend that so that the next time you're sending out documents, you've got all of his information right in the contact section. All right, jumping over to next. Now, because I've added my company templates, and I really do believe that all brokers should have templates set up for their agents to use, it just really simplifies and takes out the confusion, um, especially if you have new agents. But one of the things I like is that it's very easy now to drag and drop these documents into the order you like. Like, for instance, I generally, especially when I'm emailing, I like to have my agency disclosure as the first form that they're going to get from me, as the first form that they see. So you can actually go to the thumbnail now and you can actually drag and drop these forms into any order that you choose. But do you see how I didn't have to go hunt down my forms? They're all right in front of me. I don't have to go look for them. If there's one particular form you need, uh, let's say that I need to add a pool a pool addendum. I could actually go to the add button 
and it will open up basically a search box. Now I'm going to be honest, there are so many libraries that I have, you know, in in front of me, I probably wouldn't know exactly what pool addendum and where to find it. So I would go right up to the search box, type in the word pool, hit enter, and now all four pool addendums are right in front of me. Now I can choose the pool addendum that I want. I can select it, go ahead and hit add, and it's now dropped into my transaction. And again, I can drag it and drop it in the order that I want. So very, very easy to add additional forms, but it's really nice. You can see how many, un unfortunately, my company does have a lot of forms. Um, so I, I do recommend setting up your transaction packets with really your base forms. They can always add more, um, but if you need any help with that, we've uh, a Debbie attached a checklist right into the handouts uh, on the GoToWebinar panel. And remember, you get free tech support. So if you are a broker, um, we're happy to come out to your office and help you set these up. Um, if you are a non-member and you're looking to keep Transaction Desk, we are more than happy to come to your office, help you set up your packages and even your clauses. I don't know if everybody uses clauses. I love clauses because every once in a while I'll get uh, a document all set up. It sounds really great. I've got the language just like I want it. The next time I go, I'm like, that doesn't sound right. You know, how, how come it sounded so great last time and not this time? I got to go back and look it up. So remember, you can also set up clauses as a broker so that very easily you can insert legal language. And what I mean is, if you are a broker and you have certain language or certain affiliation language you want your agents to use, you can actually set it up in your clause library. So I'm just gonna for very quickly kind of show you a general addendum here. And I'm gonna say that my broker is kind of particular about you know what clauses we use. And maybe he's got one for, um, you know, uh, all appliances to stay with home or buyer has seven to 10 days. I mean, now there's so many crazy things going on, appraisal waivers, appraisal gaps, um, you know, things like that. So if you have particular language that you have already approved as a broker, you can set it up for your agents to use. And with one click, they can insert your legal language. And a lot of times, I know my broker always says, sometimes they get these new agents, they come up, they think they're attorneys, they come up with their own legal language, nobody can understand what the heck that's supposed to mean when there's a problem. So if you are a broker and you wanna reduce um, those types of scenarios, you can always set up your own clause library. And of course, this allows them to pick only what you've chosen as your selected language. So kind of something that not a lot of people know, it's kind of hidden there. And the reason not a lot of people know it is if you've never created a clause, you don't even see that button. Um, and so we're happy to help brokers, whether they're members or non-members, we're happy to help you set up those clauses so that your agents can choose from them. Another thing is when you're looking at these tiny little forms, it's very hard to see, especially if you're looking, um, I know sometimes there will be a contract to purchase long form, a contract to purchase short form. So if you um, have multiple forms like that and you're trying to decide which of those forms you actually want to use in this transaction, remember you can go right over here to the menu dots to the right. You can do a preview. And you can actually see that form to make sure that, in fact, was the form that you wanted to select. Um, we're going to talk, too, about some of the new features, newer features that they added in Transaction Desk, like the markup fields. If you are doing, um, if you're maybe in a counteroffer scenario um, and you want to strike something off, maybe uh, we're going to use, uh, uh, we'll use Louie. So Louie sent us a counter offer and I want to strike something maybe I don't want to include a home warranty or maybe we're not including the stove and the microwave there are these tools when you go to the counter offer tools where you can actually strike something off now you do want to see your broker on what your policy is for using these items I know some associations don't allow that. They have a whole new contract that has to be filled out. I talked to an association that has an addendum where everything has to go on a certain addendum. So for me and my brokerage, we can cross out and just have all the parties initial. That's how we would do it. But you want to see your broker um, if your policy is a little bit different. I'm going to blow this up, too, and we're going to talk a little bit about um, if you are doing a counteroffer and maybe you need to change a price. 
Um, let's say that you just got this offer, you want to counter the price. There's also a text box tool where you can literally draw a text box on your counter offer. And I'm gonna show you how to bring all those in, so don't worry. Um, let's say that we are countering this at uh, 2,008,000. million eight. Again, not really my price point, but I wish it was. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and type that in. With the text boxes, you can move them anywhere on the document you wish, but here's the problem. If I laid this on top of the original price, you see how messy that looks? It's very difficult to read, it becomes very difficult. So I could actually right click on that and I could change the background from transparent to white and I could actually move that right onto the price you can make it longer and by the way you can change your font size um, all you have to do is right click on it so if i need to change the font size to larger or smaller i can do that um, and again you can move this around anywhere on the document you wish so instead of if you're doing a counter offer and your original offer was three million you now want to change it to two eight and send it back for signatures these great markup tools become very very helpful and then all you want to do is hit save and it's going to take on those changes there's also a document slicer and i really like this one um, I'm going to go back to the beginning to kind of show you where you can find that. A lot of times, because I'm on the road so much now, if I got, uh, let's say I'm working with a buyer and I sent my buyer my buyer's agency agreement along with the purchase agreement. Now, really, that buyer's agency may have his phone number on it. I know my company has its phone number on it and some basic information. I really don't want to send that to the listing agent when I'm sending over his offer, right? I want to I want to actually take something out of the PDF or remove a form or a document. So what you can do is you can actually make a new PDF of exactly what you want to send and it's called the document slicer tool. So if you're like me and you are in the car a lot and you pull up and you have your buyer sign everything, you've got one big PDF, right? He signed everything in off on a sign. I now have his offer to purchase, his buyer's agency and a bunch, bunch of other documents, but they're all in one. I now want to turn around and send all those signed documents to the listing agent so that the seller can sign. Well, the problem is they're all in one PDF, but what you can do is you can actually make a new PDF of just the four that you wanted. So I'm going to say I only want to save those four and I want to call it uh, counter for Tom. And again, if you are working on the road a lot, uh, like I am, this becomes really handy because I can make those changes on the fly. And I'm basically taking that eight page document and I'm now only sending four pages. Or if you have a purchase agreement, maybe you only had an initial on one page that you need to send and you don't wanna send the whole thing out again. This is a really easy way to sort of slice up that document um, and send just the pages that you wish to that party. Does that make sense? All right. All right. So the biggest question I think people have um, when it comes to going through transaction desk before we get into AuthentiSign 2.0 is, well, I don't understand what's the difference between forms, which we just looked at, and documents. So step four and step five, basically. Think of this. When you're looking at a form, the form is really any fillable form that Transaction Desk has prepared. So for instance, when I go into this particular form, it's already there. The boilerplate language is right there for me to use. I can go in, select the check boxes and fill things out. So that's always going to be a form. So now when I got my license, and I hate to say it 22 years ago, it makes me feel very old when I say it, um, I thought the form was a document, to be totally honest. I did not understand when I first started using Transaction Desk, well, what the heck is the difference between a form and a document? And really, that's what it is. The forms are the fillable prepared forms that you're going to fill out. Well, so then what is a document? Well, simply, the document is anything outside of what Transaction Desk has built for you to just to fill in the blanks. So what I mean is if you have a home warranty form, um, if you have, let's say, pre-title, if you have a mortgage pre-approval letter, if you have anything like that, 
Well, what that really means is that that's an outside form, but I still, of course, want that to uh, be signed by my clients. I still want to have that included in my transaction. So it's still a very important form. Um, so if I opened up my file folder on my desk, I would want to have those same type of things right in my transaction file. So for instance, some good examples here, Tom has an offer worksheet. Um, he put in a feature sheet that he built uh, with all the features of the home. Obviously, you know, if you have a $3 million home, that's a fantastic idea. Uh, a referral form, a COVID form. Um, these are all really good examples of those outside forms that you can bring in. Um, so when an agent is getting ready to prepare their offer, they have everything all in one place. Now, one of the cool things that my rule source does is we also bring in your seller's disclosure and your lead based paint forms automatically. So before, just to kind of bounce over here, uh, before you would have to go into uh, Paragon and you'd have to go to um, the documents area and you would want to go in um, and you'd click on documents, you'd find the seller's disclosures and the lead-based paint documents and you'd have to bring them into transaction desk. That was kind of a pain. So what we've done is when you use that one click option, it automatically pulls those seller's disclosures and lead-based paint documents directly into your transaction for you. So you don't have to go through all of those extra steps. So if I want my buyer now to sign the seller's disclosure uh, with the offer, well, it's right here included in my transaction. So not only can we go through it, um, and by the way, you can do this on your phone as well. Another thing you can do through HomeSnap too, Debbie. Um, and uh, now I can see everything, but he can also sign it in one envelope. I don't have to send my buyer one thing to sign and then another thing because I want him to sign the disclosures. Everything is included. And you can include, you can include both documents and forms um, when you're going through the authentic sign process. So that's really one of the key pieces is everything is included in your transaction file. You're just picking which of those things you want them to sign but it's all together you don't have to merge and bring those documents into one place all right Debbie any other any other questions before we get into uh, uh, on the listing side yeah actually uh, Richard had a question about where is the document slicer button ah great question um, so the document slicer button isn't actually almost on every screen, believe it or not. They've added, it's getting to be such a popular uh, item. It kind of looks like, uh, for lack of a better way to say it, it kind of, you see this little painter's palette right up here at the top. It's like five in uh, of your preview right there. There's also right next to the painter palette, which is, by the way, the markup tools. Think of it as marking things up. Next to that is the document slicer. And that's that one page with two small pages, kind of looks like two small pages ripped out. And again, that's how you can slice up those documents. But it, it's right next to the painter's palette that you see there. It's called the uh, document slicer. And that will allow you to, again, cut pages off. You can also merge pages together. Um, so there's a whole lot you can do. And I'm going to show you some of that, too, when we get into the new authentic sign. OK, so your big takeaway is do all the heavy lifting in Transaction Desk because then it's very simple in AuthentiSign 2.0. There's really not a lot you need to do. Um, it will really walk you through and sort of guide you through that whole uh, process of the signing. It will even tag where everyone in the transaction is supposed to sign, so that's always nice. All right, so next, uh, I have to be honest, so I love that, it's very cool and everything, um, but here's the thing, I'm never going to do that whole process as an agent probably not going to do that each and every time. Once you know the process, once you know that wizard, um, you can really very quickly set all of those steps up right on your one screen dashboard. So as you can see right here, my transactional dashboard has my forms, my documents, and my authentic signs. Now, the very cool thing about this is if you do the authentic sign 2.0 step correctly, and I'm going to show you what that is. If you do that correctly, 
you'll be able to see everything that was signed by your clients years from now. So I recently um, had a seller reach out to me and they had purchased their house about uh, two years before they were having another baby. This was like number five for them. So they had outgrown their home. All I had to do was go back into my transaction file and literally open up the transaction and I could see all their signed paperwork. I could see um, their closing docs I scan in here. All of that is right here. So all I have to do is open it up and I can show them exactly what they paid, what type of financing, when they purchased it. Everything is in my closed file. So it makes it really easy to go back and review things. In 2.0, it automatically drops it directly down below here into the AuthentiSign box. So I can go back and see all of those signed documents at any time. All right, so we're gonna kind of twist gears a little bit because I wanna show you some of the new great things that we've done on the listing side. So we've kind of talked about if it's great on the purchase side because you're starting right in Paragon, but what about on the listing side? Well, we actually have purchased real list for 83 counties, all of Michigan, so that you can also start transactions directly from the tax data. So if you are looking to start a new listing file, you're gonna go right to your home screen in Transaction Desk. You're not gonna start from Paragon on that one because remember, you really don't ever wanna trust um, someone else's information when you're putting in your listing. Um, I wanna make sure that I am using um, the tax data as my base, a trusted record. So in this case, when we did Tom Lipinski's here, it was a listed property. We were writing a purchase agreement. But really, if I am starting a new listing, I wanna pull from the tax records to make sure that everything's coming in from the municipality. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name this. So we're gonna call this uh, Wessel. Again, I'm gonna save myself some time by applying my listing packet. Once I apply my listing packet, you'll notice it says, well, this is her listing packet. She must be the listing agent. Pretty smart, right? The last thing I wanna do though, is I want to import the data. I wanna import directly from Realist. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this is kind of a funny story. So Brian, who is our chief technical officer, he is brilliant. He can write code. He's just, he's always building really cool things but he's never really sold a house in his life. So when he set this up, he was like, now all you have to do is put in the tax ID. To which I said, well, who's gonna know that? We know addresses as agents, right? So you're gonna click on the magnifying glass and all you're gonna do is you're gonna select the county. So I'm gonna say, uh, we're gonna do Macomb here. And then you're gonna put in the root street name. Now here, I do have to caution you, don't put in anything extra. You wanna put in the county, the root street number and root street name, and here's why. Tax records are generally very exact. So you don't wanna put in, it's kinda of like when you use Google, right? You don't wanna put in too much information because you won't get the results you want. So I'm simply gonna put in the county, the street number, and it happens to be Wessel Drive, but we're just gonna put in Wessel. And I'm gonna click search tax data. Now, the idea here is that it's going to find the ID for you, and it's now going to just select it and let me start my transaction right from the tax ID. So I'm pulling in directly from the municipality information. Now, it's not filling out, you know, um, it's not filling out like square footage and things that could be wrong, because I find that that's wrong all the time. What it's doing is it's filling out the property record itself. So as you can see, it's filling out the year built, the school district, the lengthy legal description, the tax number, the subdivision, you know, all of those types of details. It will also, if I jump over to step three here, it will also fill out, obviously me as the listing agent, but it will pull the seller of record. So if you have a husband and wife who own the property, it will actually pull them in too. So those will be right here and it will pre-tag everything where on the documents, the signings should take place in AuthentiSign 2.0. All right, so I'm gonna jump over to forms because I wanna show you two cool things that um, we've done here at My Real Source. So whether you're a member or a non-member, you can actually go into the data sheet and you can do what we call the data push. And um, let me explain. So many agents will actually fill out a data sheet. 
they'll then turn it into an admin and then they have to wait for the admin to put the same information or rekey the same information into the MLS to create the listing. The idea of the data upload that you see here is that if I fill out the information and I click the data upload button, it will create a partial listing for me. And then all I have to do is go in, turn that partial listing into a complete listing by adding the photos and hitting save. So instead of me waiting for someone else to rekey in the same information, here's a way to simplify that whole step. And it will allow me to push all the information that I'm already filling into my data sheet, but it will allow me to push it directly into the MLS. Now, if you do have your admins um, go in and add things in or check them over before they go live, when you do this as an agent, your admin can actually see it, review it, and then add the photos for you if that's what you choose. Um, so your admins can actually see that information um, that you're putting in as a partial and they can even complete it for you. Um, so I just think that's very cool that I can go ahead and I can start something um, and then they can go ahead and actually see it and complete it for me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just exit out of here. So again, you'd fill out the required information that's read. You'd click the upload listing and it would create a partial for you right within Paragon. If you're not familiar with how partials work in Paragon, uh, basically right up here at the top, if you click on partials, you can see um, your office partials. If you're an admin, you can see your partials. Let me blow this up a little bit. You can see your partials as well. So I can go in and I can now turn that partial listing directly into a real listing, add my photos, and then hit save. All right, Debbie, I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of questions popping up. How are we doing? Yep, Ed, Ed really appreciated the tip about that search feature. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, pulling it from the tax records, really easy. And another feature that I really like is the um, seller's disclosure statement. If you're going on a listing appointment, um, it's a great idea to send your seller's disclosure statement ahead. Um, and what I mean is if you are calling to confirm your time, you might want to say, uh, you know, hey, I'll be there between four and five this evening. By the way, I'm going to send over your seller's disclosure that's going to tell me more about your home. Now, obviously, when you're creating a seller's disclosure, the agent isn't really ever filling that out. Right. It's always being done by the seller. But in this case, um, I have this fillable form. It's really no good to me as the agent. The whole idea is that I send it on so that the homeowner can fill it out and it comes back to me. So if you go to file and send, we'll do kind of a, a practice example here. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to send this out. And maybe I want to send it out via email. Ooh, my mouse stop working here. I want to go ahead and send this out via email. Let's see if I can do it on my touch screen. Let's see if I can make my, there we go. All of a sudden, right, it's only in a webinar that your mouse would stop working, right? <laughs> Debbie, you can you still, it. yeah. Yeah. Always, always fun. Can you still see my screen there? Yes, ma'am. You're on, uh, there you go. There you go. Back to transaction desk. All, All right. right. Sorry to bounce you around there for a second. Let's see if I can close this out so I can make this mouse work a little bit better. It's uh, all of a sudden just totally not responding. Let's do this. I think the thunderstorms are finally moving out of your town because they just hit St. Clair. Are you are you getting the booms over there now? Yep. Yeah, I don't know okay. if that's what happened, but. Yeah, I was getting I was getting a little static, and then all of a sudden it. Uh... Hey, actually, so um, I had a, a, a more of a rem yeah. So from Shelby, so with the listing data form, she's tried she's tried it before to make it a partial, but it never works. She asked if all of the red stuff has to be filled in, and that's a no. So you there's just a few items that need to be I think municipality. When you upload it and it doesn't go, it'll usually tell you, hey, you got to enter in the municipality. And there's just like three things that have to be in there. But no, you don't 
So go ahead and try it again, Shelby. And then uh, if you want, we could always share screens at some other point and get that taken care of for you. There we go. So I apologize. Um, yeah, we got a good clap of thunder and then all of a sudden it was like everything hung up and froze up on me. So I'll give this another try here. All right. Well, the nice thing is, um, I was going to say that it does auto save, and now you're going to actually be able to see that, that every 30 seconds it does automatically auto save. Thankfully, I can take you right back to where we were in our Wassel Drive transaction. <laughs> um, so the good news is that if you do lose your internet connection or you uh, have that frozen moment like I just did, it will take you right back to where you were. So um, let's go back into. Um, just because I don't want to freeze up again. Um, I want to kind of also go back into documents uh, for a moment and hold this up. So again, you can go at uh, one of the questions um, that someone just asked me via text actually was, can you also save those documents uh, via PDF and bring them in? And yes, just as I mentioned, when you are in um, the documents section, so remember forms are those fillable forms, the documents are where you're gonna go ahead and hit that plus sign. You can add documents in by dragging and dropping them in, or you can browse your computer for them. So for instance, if I uh, have a document, let's say this uh, transaction desk document, I can actually drag it right onto that drag and drop strip and it's immediately added into my documents. So if I scroll down, you can see I just added that in. Um, if you have, let's say 10 or 15 documents, I'm gonna jump right to the documents area. If you have 10 or 15 documents and you wanna drag, maybe, you, maybe you've closed on the file and you wanna drag everything over at once, you can actually click the add button you can click add a new document or even a folder. So if you have a deal that died, you can actually create a folder for that. But in this case, I'm gonna select, I wanna add a new document. If you've got a file folder with you know, a bunch of transactional files in it, you can drag up to 20 files at a time, drag them onto that strip. And as you can see, it's immediately adding those in for you. So really, really easy ways to go ahead and pull those documents in. Um, not hard at all. All you have to do is just remember um, that when you're, you want to make sure that you're labeling them so you know what you're adding in so you don't go back and have 10 offers. Um, somebody said the other day, well, you know, I did all these counter offers and now I can't find anything. Well, obviously labeling them offer one or creating those file folders that say, um, you know, previous offer or offer one or dead uh, transaction, something along those lines so that you can quickly identify which were the good transactions or the most current transaction that you're working with. All right, makes sense so far? Any other questions, Deb, before we move on? Nope, we're doing good, thank you. All right. Um, so next, talking about AuthentiSign. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, click on our pen icon here. Um, the new AuthentiSign is going to have a little bit different, it's gonna have a little more advanced look. Um, if you remember the classic, you had those um, icons that showed you what's completed, what the lightning bolt was in offer, you know, in process, there was the gear if it hadn't been sent properly. So you could kind of identify where you were in the signing process. Now, the updated UI for AuthentiSign um, is going to be where you can actually go from the new version and bounce back to the classic. So if you're in a hurry and you're like, you know what, I just I don't have time to learn anything new. I've got to get this document out. Remember, you can always bounce back to the classic. Um, if you want to go ahead and, and get familiar with the new, the, the old version will be sunset in December. So you want to make sure you're starting to play with the new, but I know how it is. We're all just getting back to work in the new norm, right? Sometimes you're in a hurry. You just want to send out a quick addendum. So remember, you can bounce back and forth. But even in your transaction, there it's separated by tabs, the classic and the new. So you know what you did in the old and what you're doing in the new because the UI is very different. It won't be, you know, it won't be where everything just shows up in one big mass. So you can bounce back to the classic if you need to. Of course, there is the new 
Um, and obviously, if you did something previously, you'll find that in the classic. Um, and if you are starting it now, you'll obviously find it in the new. All right. I did have a question. Vicki's got a really good question. So I, I think I know the answer, but I don't want to misspeak. So when you upload a document, will it be fillable? Great question. Um, if you upload, let's say you upload a PDF. Um, no, that is going to be a locked document. It will be part of your transaction. Um, but it will not be a document that will autofill. Um, now, if you upload um, like a checklist and in a fillable format, then yes, you can go in and check those off. So if you have like a Word doc, um, it will open in a Word doc. Um, most, most documents will convert to a PDF though. Um, so if you have like a fillable checklist where, um, where it's an editable checklist, Yes, you can see those. And and by the way, if you are an office and you're creating your templates, um, you can add things like your checklists uh, right to your template. So even if it's maybe it's something you just require your agents to see, the agents aren't actually filling it out. You can still include those items in there. Um, they're ju you're just going to have to include them in a non-fillable format, if that makes sense. Does that yes. make, did that answer the question, Deb? Yes. It's kind of how you how you bring it in. If you bring it in in a locked PDF, then no, you won't be able to fill it out. Um, you still can bring it in, but it just may not be editable. That's what I was thinking. So if you have the editable document, then it will be that. Okay. Correct. And yeah. Shelby wanted to know how long is the class going to be available for? So in December, it's the original authentic sign is being sunsetted, correct? Correct. Yeah, they, I think they said December 31st. I certainly would not recommend waiting that long to go in and start playing around with it because, yeah. um, you know, nobody likes to be on the last day and feeling the pressure. And I think a lot of people um, with different MLSs who are no longer providing it, they're kind of feeling like that. You know, like now I have to go in and learn something brand new and it's not user friendly and I'm just trying to get back to work. And, um, you know, so I wouldn't recommend waiting till the last minute for sure. Um, but know that the, the premise of Authenticine 2.0 will still be the same. It will still be that user friendly application. It will just be faster and all on one screen. So that's kind of the good news about it. All right. Any other questions, Deb? Did I miss anything? I think I've got them. We are good to go. All right. Um, all right, so talking about the new um, kind of follows that same idea where we're going to click on add um, and we're going to start. And it asks you right from the beginning, do you want to start it in classic or do you want to start it in new? We're going to go ahead and start it in new. And really the hardest thing in, in Authentisign, whether it's the classic or it's the new version, is simply marrying the transaction file to what you're sending. So, for instance, if I'm sending documents out to Barry Buyer, well, I need to make sure that Barry Buyer, um, when he signs those documents, they automatically go back into my purchase transaction. I don't want to have to get them in the email, save them, store them, then pull them in at the end. I just want it to automatically be signed and go back where it belongs, right? I want it to be really streamlined and seamless. So that's really the hardest part of using Authentisign is really just marrying the transaction file to what you're sending out. So if I am creating documents for signatures for 205 Lakeshore, then I want to marry it to my Lakeshore file. That means when the documents are signed, they're going to automatically go back into the appropriate transaction. So really easy. I'm marrying the things I'm sending out to where do I want them to go? Now, here's where um, I think that you'll find it gets really, really simple is you could add a new form or document, but really we did all that because we're going to bring in all of our documents really from our Lakeshore transaction. So if you were starting a brand new one, um, you could go in and you could add a document, but really I want to add a document or form right from my transaction file. So in this case, I would literally just go down the list. And as I mentioned, this is not only your forms, but your documents as well. So if I wanted to add all my 
you know, my purchase agreement, my addendums. I could literally just choose everything from my transaction that I now want them to sign. So I'm gonna go down my list. You'll also notice it will show you what is a form and what is a document. So if I'm looking for fillable forms, you see how it says form underneath the name? But as I scroll down, if I wanted the COVID buyer form or the offer worksheet or that seller's disclosure, well, I'm certainly just gonna go in and I'm gonna select add here and it's gonna drop those forms in for signing. So pretty easy. There's also, obviously, if you wanna add, you can drag and drop forms. So if you've got a home warranty form, you've got pre-title, things like that, you could go ahead and drag and drop a form or just click on it and browse right from your computer. So if I wanted to add another form in, I could go ahead, click on it and pull that document in too. So really, really easy. The nice thing here is you'll notice I don't have to click each one of those sections open. As you can see right here, those sections are right in front of me. They're located now. I apologize, your GoTo webinar box may be kind of covering it. Um, so if your GoTo webinar box over to the right is kind of covering it, you should see signers, docs, um, you should see tools, option, and feedback. So sometimes you might have to move your GoTo webinar. You can kind of grab that little gray bar at the top and it kind of moves around if you need to see it a little bit better. But now I have my documents in here. There's one other option that AuthentiSign 2.0 gives you. You can also grab files or forms, if you will, from another transaction. So now people ask me all the time, what, why would you ever use this? What would you use this for? So let me give you an example. Let's say Debbie is buying a house and we write up our purchase agreement. We've got her pre-approval in there. We've got her buyer's agency. She's all good to go. We have the home inspection. The deal falls apart. Kind of a bummer, right? Well, I'm not going to make Debbie re-sign the buyer's agency and re-sign a bunch of documents. You know, I don't need to get another pre-approval. It's already in her file, right? So I actually want to go in and I want to go into where it says my files. And I actually want to pull it from the documents in another transaction. So remember, you can actually go into my files you can pull documents from another transaction file. So in this case, if, um, if that deal did die um, and I now wanna pull in Debbie's pre-approval, I can go into the transaction folder. I can find her, okay, we'll say she was buying Cuddle and here is her pre-approval. I'm now adding that into my transactional file. And now I have her pre, but instead of going in and trying to find things and re-adding them, I can actually pull documents from within another transaction into this specific signing envelope. So very easy to add those documents into AuthentiSign 2.0. Again, all you're going to do is click add a document. It's right over here on the right side. You can pull in from documents and forms within the transaction. You can upload obviously a new transactional form against that same concept. You can go in and drag and drop it right onto the bar. You could click on the bar and you could pull it in that way if you wanted to. But remember, if you have a deal um, where again, maybe Debbie's buying the house, we've got her buyer's agency, we've got her pre-approval, everything is already in another file, but we have a bad home inspection. Now I wanna pull that into her new file. All I'm gonna do is click add a document or transaction. I'm gonna to go to my files. I'm gonna look in my documents and I'm simply gonna find that other transaction folder. And I'm gonna say, okay, she's got her pre-approval in uh, Volpe Drive here. I'm just gonna pull it into this transaction as well. So pretty easy. Again, you can add files in three different ways. You can pull from other files, you can upload them, or simply just pull them in from the transaction you've already created. One of the unique things that they did change in this application is you can change those signer names, as I mentioned, on the fly. So if you misspell a signer name, remember you can still change it even after you've hit sent. So let's take a look at the signing options right here at the top. The first one is let's add in who's gonna be signing. Now, of course, you could add yourself, you could add a new signer, 
Um, you could add from Google contact from your Google contacts or even your contacts within uh, Transaction Desk. But really, if you did all the heavy lifting like we did when we started, we really just want to add right from the transaction, right? So as I click that, you can see, okay, here's Barry, our buyer, and we've got Colleen, the selling agent. So I'm going to select who's going to be signing. And then the hardest part is, how do you want them to sign? If they're a remote signer, they're simply getting it in the form of an email. If they are a, let's say it's an attorney, and you want the attorney to review ahead of time before it goes on to the buyer, you can use the reviewer role, which literally sends it to the attorney and asks them to accept or reject. Once they do that, it's then going to either go on to the buyer for signature, or it's going to stop the process, and now that feedback will be sent to you as the agent. Now, there's a third rule, and everybody gets a little confused on this, so I kind of want to explain it. The third option is if you are, it's not like CCing on an email. Normally, if you CC on an email, it sends it out to that party, and they get to kind of a read-only version, right? They're, they're seeing it. It's not really sent to them, but they're seeing it. This is very different. This CC role is actually, if you wanted to go on to an ancillary, like a title company or a lender, you can CC them. And what that means is if all the parties sign, if the buyer signs and the seller signs and everything is completed, it can then go right on to the title company or the lender with a personal note. So again, if you wanted to have everybody in the uh, transaction sign it and you wanted it automatically delivered to the title company with a personal note, you can do that by CCing them in. A good example is um, if you are listing a home with a husband and wife and you've got it all set up where the husband and wife are going to sign, they both sign and you want to order pre-title then I would CC your title company and it will automatically deliver those signed documents with your message of, hey, I want to start pre-title. So it makes it much simpler instead of getting it back, now having to touch it again, now resend it on to the title company. It just makes it a lot easier. Then do you want to do sign in line or simply simul sign? Sign in line is basically where uh, you are sending it in a particular order. So for instance, I don't ever want to send it to the listing agent before my buyer has signed the counter, right? I'm not going to send it to everybody at once. So I'm going to set the signing order, meaning I want it to go to my buyer, to me to witness, and then on to the listing agent. So that's really what the signing order is. Um, and again, if you're pulling right from your transaction contacts, all you really have to do is select who's going to be signing and it makes it that much easier. So I'm going to say the selling agent and the buyer are signing. As you can see, it put them in an order, but you can also drag and drop that order. So if it needs to go in a different order, you can change that. I actually had a, a very nice lady in uh, my class recently and she was brand new to uh, real estate. She called me and she was like in tears on her way home. I literally pulled over and used my hotspot to see what was going on. She, in fact, had sent her new buyer um, a purchase agreement 12 times. Well, unfortunately, she had her as the agent signing it first, right? So because she never went into her email to sign it, it never went on to Barry Buyer. So it is an order. And until that first person completes it, well, now it can't go on to the second party. So I always use the sign in line. I really like it because it allows me to have a little better control in the transaction and I can kind of see the logical order of real estate. But if, you, if you're just working with two buyers, it's a husband and wife, and you don't care who signs first, then you don't have to use the signing order. You can just turn it off by toggling it, and now both parties can sign it as soon as they get it. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on because usually if you're going to send it on to the listing agent uh, after your buyer signs it and you witness it, well, in that case, now I'm adding a third party. I want to make sure it's going in the right order. Of course, you can always add more participants who will be signing. You just click on the add participant and obviously you can add them in from your transaction contacts, from Google, or again, from your Instanet contacts. Debbie, any uh, questions on the first part of this? You're gonna get to that part again, I believe soon, 
uh, it was David wanted to see the document slicer again. Oh, or okay. Two. Yes, we can do that. We'll go back to awesome. the document. Thank you. Let me make a little note. Um, and okay, slicer. Otherwise, I'll forget. It's a blonde. Yeah, I'll have a blonde moment and I'll forget. Okay. <laughs> oh, one of the ones that I love if. It's, it shows that we are you know, letting our members know where the accurate data is coming from. This is, um, Colleen refers to real list data. Isn't even using BSNA data more accurate and up to date? Yes, indeed. <laughs> BSNA is the best record um, as far as if you were ever in a legal situation, that is definitely the one that the judge would use. It's the trusted municipality record. It's the it is the best by far. Um, the reason that we use Realist is that we are able. Not every community has the online setup for BSNA. Some actually call it something different up north. And remember, because of our data sharing, we wanted something that we could give members everywhere. Now, remember, this is not filling out things like square footage. It's basically filling out the property address, the school district and the actual property card um, information, which is generally good in Realist. Um, if you went beyond that, if you went to like, you know, the, the square footage or basement or the, I wouldn't, I would recommend not using that. I always, I like BSNA for that as well. Um, and you are right, that is the best record. Um, however, 83 counties means we could cover the whole entire state. And because we're literally filling in the property card, which is the base information, um that was that was kind of the point is that all of our data shares if we set them up with this they could use that too so they could they could if we're vendoring let's say we're vendoring bay city they can pull that information there because they have it um where they in their area don't always have access to bsna like we do but you are right bsna is the best and most trusted record good question everybody's paying attention i haven't put anybody to sleep yet so this is good <laughs> All right. So um, as I mentioned, you can pull in. So we did the signing. We kind of covered that. And as you can see, I'm literally and I apologize again if your go to webinar is kind of covering it. I'm literally just going down the right hand column over here. Signing we did. We put them in the logical signing order. Um, we have now added in the documents. One of the big questions is, OK, so if I want to drag and drop these, if I put them in a different order, um, then my broker had in the template. Can I do that? Yes, very easily. Now you can actually grab those little dots and move them to the left, to the right. Um, if you are looking, if you click on the little arrow to the right, um, you can replace a file. So if you realized, oh, geez, you know, there was a more updated uh, counter offer, you can actually replace a file here. Um, admins can set it up so that things are linked to a checklist. So if you require certain things um, for your office, you can link these items to a particular checklist. Now, one of the things that I don't like, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share what I love about 2.0, and I'm also going to share things maybe that I don't like so much about 2.0. One of the things that I felt was a little bit tricky um, was when you before wanted to rotate a page um, or you wanted to work with a particular page um, it had this button that said rotate page uh, you know it doesn't do that here there's little menu dots at the bottom this is where you could rotate or delete a page or view the page it's these little tiny menu dots now i have to be honest when i looked at it at first i thought it was like a little tiny page number um, before you had a large button that said uh, rotate the page um, or delete that particular page. So now when you're on the page itself, when you've opened the document or form, this is where you can actually rotate it. So again, if I click on uh, Tom's Lakeshore Sellers Disclosure, as you can see, it's multiple pages. <clears throat> Excuse me, you can see it's multiple pages. If I wanted to remove a page or rotate a page, I'd simply go to those menu dots. And as you can see, I'm just clicking on it and it's now rotating that page. If I wanted to remove one particular page, again, I can delete it. So again, if you're kind of looking for that document slicer option when you're in the authentication part, the signing part, this is where you would go. You could delete that page, rotate that page or view that page so it's much larger.
Okay, that I found a little bit tricky. It took me a few minutes to kind of sort of figure out where that was. So remember, just go to the document itself. If you, you know, a lot of times where this comes in is we get an offer that someone scanned in upside down, right? Now we're trying to do a counter on it. And you're like, oh my God, it's upside down. I don't want to have to print it and now turn it around. Actually, you can do it all right from here. Just going to open up that particular document. You're going to do that rotate and you can use those page options. Again, it kind of looks like a page number, so don't be fooled like I was. I'm like, doesn't make sense, where is it? <laughs> um, the next option is your tools. Now, before you had to click on those flyout windows to drag and drop those items into place. Now, you can literally just grab the tag and set it into place, okay? Now, one of the things that I really was frustrated about, and I kind of just learned, um, when you start moving your initials and your signatures, sometimes they include the date now. Uh, matter of fact, out of the box, I've changed mine because I don't like that, uh, but out of the box, when you drag and drop those signatures or initials into place, it now it automatically includes the date. I don't really care for that uh, personally. When I drag my you know, sign here, I don't always want the date included with it. Sometimes there's a full, like as you can see here, there's a full another line for the date. So I don't want it included with my signature. Here's a little tip. If you click right on it, you can actually save it as a default. So if you want the um, timestamp and date stamp to always be included. You see how it just included it there? Um, you can actually pick that and you can save it as your default. You can also scale it so it's larger or smaller and you can actually save your defaults for that particular group. So um, my defaults as Colleen DeLang, the selling agent, I can actually set it so that it always includes the date stamp or it never does, it's completely up to me. Then I wanna hit my save the default setting. That was the thing I wanted to show you the other day, Debbie. I remember I text you and I'm like, oh, remind me to. Um, oh, yeah, that, yeah. That's new. yeah, that's one of the one of those new features that I really, because that was a complaint we got is even in the old AuthentiSign now, um, when you drag those, um, they automatically include the um, time and date on some, and even the initial, which I know even Lisa Harris, our uh, instructor she goes I don't like that I mean how do we get that off of there and so um, in playing with it uh, when they said they released it I'm like oh you just click on it and save it as your default now you don't have to worry about that any longer easy yeah. to change from from signer a to signer b too um, so you can obviously just change the names right from here and you can also again reset your signature size so if I change to and I think I left berries so you could see it I put, see how Barry's automatically includes that time and date? I don't like that. Um, on his initials, same thing. Um, and so you can go in and you can say, yeah, I don't want the initials to always have that you know, time and date stamp. You just click on them um, and then go over to time and date stamp. And then you can go ahead and remove that. Just save it as your default if that's um, something that irritates you like it did me. Great, um, and actually I have. I've got two questions if you have just a minute. Yeah. Well, Jason had mentioned, he says, when changing from classic to the 2.0, his old signatures are not appearing. Have you heard of that? I, I put a question into tech support too to see if they've heard of that. But all were yours, yours there? Um, when I went in, no, I it did require me to set up a new signature. And I think um, the UIs are different in the way that it will require you to set up a signature again. Um, when we when we look at signatures and we'll go into that, they can upload a signature now. Um, they can you know scroll it out with their finger like you do at the grocery store with your stylus, or they can you know simply type out uh, uh, or select the font that's closest to their signature. Um, so yes, it did make me do that as well. Sorry. And then, so the know. other question: uh, Will defaults follow across all signing events? or must it be done for each signing? Great question. So, um, actually, it goes by the role. Um, so for instance, if you select that as your, remember how I said the most important thing in 2.0 is your role. You can see Barry is my buyer. Um, Colleen is the selling agent. It is looking to save your preferences based on that role. 
Um, so if you if you set it for your buyer and you hit save as default, your default for that buyer, the buyer signature, when you go forward working with the buyer, will have those same defaults. Good question, though. I know I had to play with that because I had that question as well. Not signature, past signature. Oh, not signature. Past signatures are not showing up at all. As in old. Oh, right. Yeah. So they are. Um, Colleen, you'll oh. probably say a little easier than me. Sure. Um, yes, you're right. When you go into the new version, you don't see anything you created in the old. So let me um, let me kind of go back. They're still there. So don't panic because I did that, too. I'm like, oh, my God, where is Sally Sue's you know, transaction? Don't worry. I promise they didn't lose them. They're still there. They're just under the classic tab. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of go back for a second. When you're in the new version, this is kind of what it looks like. But I can see all my old stuff is in here. If you click on the tab next to new that says classic, you will still see all of your old signatures and all of your old, everything's still there. It's just separated. The new UI is so much faster and built in, in a different way. So they've had to sort of uh, categorize what was in the old UI is under classic. So all your stuff's still there. You just gotta click on the classic tab. And then the new UI has everything that you've created um, in this new Authentisign 2.0. Did, did, that, did, that did that answer the question, Deb? I'm pretty sure that is it. Thank you very much for the clarification. And it's, it's also like that in the transaction, too. When you go back to your transaction yeah. itself under the Authentisign box, you'll find it separated in classic and new there as well. Yeah. So good questions. Okay, so we're we're coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he is all good. He responded. He says, "Yep, that answered it." Perfect. Great. Sometimes I'm not always sure, and I'm not reading the questions. So if I miss something, just let Debbie know, and we can go over it again. Okay. So obviously, there's the basics. There's you know the sign here, pretty self-explanatory. The initials, um, a text line. If you're giving them a line to fill in something like their phone number or something like that, um, you know that party can add text into that particular line. But there's a couple in here that I always get questions on. So I thought maybe we could take a look at those. And one of those is the radio button. Um, sometimes we're giving um, clients a choice, like, are you going to have a home inspection? Or are you not going to have a home inspection? Um, you know, do you want to include the pool warranty? Do you not want to include the pool warranty? Something like that. If you're giving them a choice, then you would use the radio button and the radio button works like this it's literally where you can add an option a or an option b like yes i'm going to have a home inspection no i'm not going to have a home inspection but they can only choose one because let's say, face it if you gave them an option to click yes or no and you made them both optional guess what's going to happen we're going to click on both of them because they don't know these forms like we do right so if you wanted to give them a choice where they would pick yes i want a home warranty no i don't want a home warranty that's really what the radio buttons are for it's giving them an option but they can only select one if you need to add additional radio uh options you can click on it you can click on plus and it will give you additional ones that you can um, add to your form. So let's say there's three options. You can either delete it with the garbage can or by clicking on it, you can click that plus option, create a copy and do another radio button here as well. So you can actually, I think you can add up to 10 now under radio buttons. So you're just gonna find your lines and you can go in and add additionals here. Um, if you wanted to, and let's see, did I grab my purchase agreement? If you have a purchase agreement, which is generally my, my example, I don't know if I grabbed one here. Um, if you have a purchase agreement that requires everyone to initial at the bottom, you instead of having to go in and click on Colleen's name and move the initials box over and then go to the next page, my purchase agreement happens to be seven pages long, which means I have to do 14 sets of initials on top of their signatures. And that's really such a pain, right? So really what I'd rather do is I'd rather um, do the initial pages button and just pick where I would like the parties to 
uh, initial on the document. So on my PA, the buyer would initial on the bottom uh, right-hand side of the page, and you can choose the size of the initial, and it's gonna ask you, okay, who do you want to initial? I'm gonna say Barry, our buyer, he's gonna be our initialer. What forms do you, you want that applied to? So I'm gonna say we would do it to our purchase agreement, but in this case, we'll do it to this one. And then we can place the initials on that form. So if you have a multiple page purchase agreement, what I wanna do, instead of dragging each one of those tags into place, I can do the same thing. As you can see, it's now put Barry Byers initial. All I'm doing is now dragging it on the actual initial field. I don't have to keep doing that on every single page. And of course, you can use the markup tools as the agent. So if this was a counter offer, and I just did this the other day, I did a counter offer and the, I forgot to, I got everything else right. I was all worried about the terms and what we were asking for, got all the way to this page and I'm like, oh my God, I did not include the new price. <laughs> so if that's the case, you can go right into, there's the text box, the strike through those same great features that I showed you in the transaction desk side. But if you forgot to do it in transaction desk, don't worry, you can do them right through the 2.0 interface too. So again, you wanna check with your broker on what the policy is, but mine would be that we would add the initials, we would do the cross off. Um, and if you wanted to use the text box, same thing, you're gonna just enter your text in the text box. So I'm gonna say, we're gonna counter this for 560,000 or whatever your counter is gonna be. So we'll do 560. And again, you can change that transparency. So don't worry if you've got this text box on here and you know it's, it's looking all messy, you can change the transparency to um, whether you want it to be clear um, or if you wanted to just put that transparency so that you can set it on top and start over. So you can do that right from here. Um, and a lot of these features too, if you just click into them, it'll give you the simple option to delete or change them. Just click on the tag themselves. So if you've got something in the wrong location, just click on that delete button and it will pull it right off. The highlighter got a little bit better too. I know sometimes that could be a little bit tricky. The pen I used to never use because it was just, it would make me absolutely crazy. I'd get something on there and then I couldn't get it off. That's gotten much better. Um, the strike through option got better. So again, you're just dragging and dropping. Markup tools are really more for the agents um, where the tax box and signer actions are really more for the parties who are actually signing the contracts. All right, how are we doing on questions, Debbie? I'm sorry, and I know I'm seeing that question light a lot. So I know you're working away at all of them. We are all good, all caught up. All right, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and go to the options tab. This is really where you could do a lot of those things that most people never do, which is um, if you're doing a counter offer, you know that um, authenticine ID at the top of the page, this is where you could change it. So if, you, you know, if you've done it three or four times back and forth, it's kind of messy and it starts really making your document look messy. You can change where that ID is you could clear all of your signing actions or markups. You could add things like expiration dates. Maybe you only want them to be able to sign for a certain amount of time. So that's really, I gotta be honest, most people don't use most of the options. Um, it's also where you can find a product tour. Um, and again, where you can actually set up reminders. Um, Lisa, my good, good friend and the trainer here, she literally sets up a reminder. So it reminds them every day at 9 a.m. that they still have something that is not uh, completed. So you can actually set up expiration dates or reminders right under the options. All right. So we've got our parties now. Remember that one of the key um, advancements that was made is that if you spell someone's name incorrectly, you can go back in and edit it at any time. You can also update their transaction contact information um, so that when you go to pull that contact again, it's automatically updated. Now, in the old version, I checked that all the time. It never seemed to be updating and it was really frustrating to me. In the new version, it seems to be working great. Um, you could also add additional security by including a signer pin. You know, most people don't really do that. I have to be honest, we wanna make it so easy for the consumer to simply sign. So once we have our signer set up, if you've sent it out, 
Before you had to cancel it, you had to go back in, you had to resend it. The good news is you can just change it here and hit save. Now when they open up that, um, when, they, when they click on the link to open that transaction back up, their name will appear correctly. So it's, it's nice, it's actually in real time. So everything, instead of opening each one of those sections, you'll find you can do everything from the main dashboard, the tools have gotten a little better, easy to bounce between signers, it's not really hidden like it was before, and then really all you have to do is hit next. Hey Colleen. Yes. How often can you send the buyer's package, uh, the, the offer package to a buyer? I mean, How, you know, the reminder, can you have it set up to go like every four hours? Um, let me go into reminders. Um, I have not, again, Lisa's a big reminder person. Um, out, let's see what the options are. So she, it's one day, let me click on the, all the options here. So you can do one, two, three, four, or five days. And you could set, so you could literally, it looks like you could do it every hour if you wanted to. All right. Which I don't know if I would recommend, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hopefully that helps. And I haven't played a lot with the reminders. I apologize, I don't generally do that. Um, or the expiration dates, I don't generally do that either. So, um, but if you, uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to test it out for you and let you know. Okay, so then lastly um, is going into next. Next is also where you can um, customize your invitation. So if you wanted your um, subject line to read something different or you wanted to put a personal note. Now, as I mentioned, there were two things I did not like about 2.0. Um, one was the fact that um, you the, it was a little bit hard to tell with how to turn off the um the time and date for each stamp like when you moved an initial i certainly don't want the time and date with the initial so that was a little tricky you have to click on it to remove it and save it as your template the other thing i didn't like was the uh page when you wanted to rotate a page it's kind of hard to find to do that you got to look for those menu dots and then the last thing is if you wanted to customize your invitation email which i generally do for most of my clients um, it only looks like one person shows up here. But keep in mind, if you scroll down, you can do it for other parties. So let's say this was a divorce situation and uh, Colleen and Barry Byer were getting a divorce. And I wanted to put a message in for Colleen um, or a message maybe to the title company that you know maybe we wanted separate rooms. You have to remember to scroll down. It kind of looks like it's only one party here. And I went back and was kind of looking for how to put in the second message. The interesting thing is it's actually just scrolling down. You can actually pop in a second message and then um, go ahead and hit save. And now you can go ahead and send your invitation. Okay, so, so just a little bit, it's just the formatting on your screen. It doesn't look like that's like that second party is there, but they actually are. Um, you just kind of got to scroll down. So those are my three things I didn't like. There's a whole lot more I do really like. Um, I think they've made it so much faster. If you use the old one a lot, you saw that spinning circle all the time. I hated that. I called it the circle of death. It was like constantly spinning and spinning and spinning. And it was a little frustrating um, because you had to kind of wait for everything to load. This is 60% faster. So that means you're going to get it a lot quicker. But I also like on the client side what it looks like. So I'm actually going to open up my email real quick. Debbie, can you see my Yahoo email? Yes, ma'am. All right, perfect. Um, so I'm going to actually open up what the client sees because I think you'll find that it's an easier invitation for them. It, it's not quite as much. It looks a little more streamlined, and they don't have to find that. Um, uh, they don't have to find that second complete. So, so again, you want to make sure you have your branding in Transaction Desk. So here's my company branding. My information is right at the bottom. Just letting them know Colleen DeLang, their agent, is actually looking for your signature. Remember, it comes from you, the agent, because they have no idea who um, Authentisign is or who Transaction is, Transaction Desk is. So it's actually coming from you. And then they have that streamlined process. They just click the Start Signing. Those little check boxes that they used to have to check off that were really hard to do on a phone, they got rid of those, thankfully. I just now accept. 
and I start my signing process. So I'm literally clicking, there's my font. Um, they can also now upload a signature. So some people are really funny about that. I've run into just a couple that said, you know what, I have a signature, a digital signature that's already created and I wanna use that. So they can go to options and they can actually change their signature. They can either draw it with their fingertip so again, actually draw it. Hopefully you're better than I am. Just quickly do it there. Um, or they can now upload their signature too. So if they have a digital signature that they've already created, they can go to options and they can use that. Most people are never gonna do that, right? They're gonna click on the font that's um, that pops up on their screen and it's gonna allow them to start that signing process. It's gonna add in their initials and their signature. Again, if you've opened up a particular line, they'll be able to type in there. And all they have to do really is hit next. Now remember those radio um, buttons that I mentioned? You can pick one or the other. If I make a mistake, I can click the other one, but I can only pick one. I'm not choosing both. I don't want a home inspection and not have a home inspection, or I don't want to have a warranty and not have a home warranty, right? I'm only able to choose one. Then I hit my finish, and it says complete signing, big box. They can't miss it like they did before. Um, and if they want to, they can even, since it is still kind of beta and kind of new, it will ask them how their signing experience was. You get the signing ID right here, and that's it. So hopefully that took you, um, you know, through some of the new features. Hopefully you found that that was a little helpful in kind of figuring out some of the differences. I like it because, again, it's all on one screen. I do want to show you that back in your transaction, so we're going to go back to our, lakes, our Lakeshore transaction. If you have your dashboard set up so that your signing docs are included, so here's my dashboard, you can see the Lakeshore has been sent to the client. And if I want to find old documents that you sent through the previous version, remember uh, that was a question just a few moments ago, you can actually use those tabs to find what you're looking for. So again, this has been sent to one client, still has to go to the other client for their signature, but I can see the status right from the actual transaction. All right, Debbie, did I uh, did I miss anything? I think I took them on a pretty thorough tour. Any any questions we missed so far? Did you already review the document slicer? Um, I will go back to that again. Thank okay. you. All right, so document slicer. I'm gonna go into documents. Let's grab a big document here. Let's go, I'm gonna go in and add. It's like whenever you want a really long PA, you can't find it. And normally you have a uh, ton of them. I'll just grab my company PA. Um, give me two seconds. So I think that's the one we probably use the most um, is our purchase agreement. All right, so I've loaded in my purchase agreement. Um, and if I go to the menu dots to the right, you can do it on the form itself too. So it's really just how you wanna, how you wanna access it. Use the menu dots to the right. Um, you will find slice and markup. If you click on the form itself, it's there. It's just the little piece of paper with the two page. So it looks slightly different, but you can really do it from most anywhere. So we're gonna do slice a form. And again, you could do markup and then slice it from there too. So you're just picking your option. I'm gonna do markup in DocBox. This would give you your markup tools. So if you were countering something, you'd click on that tool. Let's say I wanna do the line through, you'd click on that. But really the document slicer, so here's the tools. The document slicer is that page with the two pages ripped out, as you can see over here. I'll say, yep, I want to save my changes. Ooh. Doing this without a mouse, Debbie, I want you to know. <laughs> All right, so here's my document slicer. And I want to go ahead and basically, again, the document slicer is where you've got, uh, think of it this way, you've got a buyer you're working with and you have a buyer's agency agreement along with a purchase agreement. Um, along with the pre-approval and maybe some personal stuff between you and the buyer. So I had them sign everything all at once. But really, I want to turn around now and sign those same documents. I want to send those signed documents to the listing agent. 
but I don't want them to see my buyer's agreement. I don't want them to see things that are confidential between me and the buyer. But I also didn't want to send my buyer three sets of envelopes to sign either, right? So I want to actually now cut off those pages. So I'm going to, basically what I'm doing is I'm selecting the pages that I want to make a new PDF. So I'm going to say, I really only want to send the first three pages to the listing agent. I'm going to do a save as my selected pages. And I would say something like counter offer for Tom or whatever you want to call it. Now I'm taking that seven page document, and by the way, you can do this on your phone too, and I'm basically taking that seven page document, I'm now making it three pages. Now I can go ahead and I can send those three pages directly over to that listing agent without him seeing all of my confidential information. So once you make changes to things, remember my counter offer for Tom now shows up on my documents, right? Now I'm going to select it and I'm going to email that over to Tom. So I literally have selected that three page document and I'm going to hit the email button or you could fax it or print it, whatever you wanted to do. By the way, you can also merge documents. So all of those are available right on the documents tab. All right, Debbie, can you ask if they had answered the if they had answered the question? I will right, we'll see if we get a response back. If you need to see it again, was, let me know. I know it's, uh, it's a few oh, steps, so. I I also did add the cheat sheet on the document slicer into the handouts of the GoToWebinar. And don't forget, we do have, uh, what do we have, 85 cheat sheets now uploaded in Paragon, wow. which is uh, in that. When you're in Paragon, it's at the very top right. It's a link called MS Documents. So as you, Debbie's referring to, and Debbie did a great job. That was kind of uh, one of her ideas of making sure people had help 24 hours a day um, is she built this MLS documents and you should be able to see it right at the top of Paragon in the right hand side. Um, and when you go into the education, it literally says cheat sheets on it right there. And when you click on it, it's going to open up all 81 files. You were four off, Deb, but that's because we removed a few. So it's good. <laughs> But I think we also have some in the, um, there's a few extra in the MIRS education folder. Ooh. Oh, okay. I think I clicked on the all all uh, party folder, so. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. Yep, so we've got all of our cheat sheets in there. Yeah, you won't see all of these. We just, we do a lot of vendoring and teaching for others. 87, you're, now we're the other way, oh, so that's still good. Off. Very good. <laughs> That's very good, but that's because you added the two new authentic signs. So, um, oh, anyway. yeah, yeah. so uh, under MLS documents, those are there. And then don't forget, um, we're recording this class. So if you missed anything, and I apologize, I had a couple of glitches. My mouse literally stopped working. So um, it was kind of like it was touch and go there. So um, if you missed any part of this class, um, you can also go to our My Real Source Media YouTube channel. Um, we're going to record this. If you hit the subscribe button, it'll actually let you know when the class is ready. There's a little red subscribe button over to the right. And um, you'll, we've got a ton of subscribers on our channel. And the reason is anytime a new product or a new class comes out, it will give you that alert notification that, hey, a new product or a new class was recorded. Um, so if you hit that subscribe button, you'll be part of that My Real Source Media channel. And we put different things like we have um, um, a superhero birthday bash coming up. We just turned 100 years old. Um, and so there'll be information on how to register and things like that under our channel. Um, Debbie did a great job, too, of making uh, playlists. So when you want to watch this class or a cloud CMA class or a real set um, or a um, um, uh, realist class, or if you want to find out about electronic lockboxes or transaction desk, all of these are recorded. You can go right to the playlist and look for the product that you're looking for, and you can actually choose from the classes that way. So again, it's YouTube and it's my real source media that will take you to our um, class list. If you click on playlist, that's usually the easiest way to navigate it. Um, and Debbie's done just a, a great job. Debbie's done a great job of organizing those to keep it nice and easy. All right. Did I miss anything else? 
hopefully you feel like you got a good grip on what that's going to look like. And if you are, again, if you are a non-member, you are not a My Role Source member, we'll be happy to help you move your transactions over as well as your transaction templates. We'll be happy to help you set up clauses. Um, we're even happy to come right out to your office and help you get that all set up. So if you're coming from another MLS, I know there's a, another MLS that is uh, changing uh, form platforms. And so if you need help and you want to stay with the number one product transaction desk and Authentisign 2.0, we'd be happy to help you do that. Excellent. We are good to go. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody, for attending. Thank you, Colleen, for another great webinar. Thank you. All right. Well, have a great day. Sell, 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 and uh, enjoy your weekend, everybody.